When, when I was invited for this, I said, it's impossible. Ten minutes. <laughs> Ten minutes, they go like this. So I have to choose what I'm going to say. Uh, and this is personal history. Uh, after I worked with the farm workers for a couple of years. And uh, I remember most of all that when we were going in the peregrinacion, it wasn't a march. It wasn't a protest. It was a peregrinacion from Delano to Sacramento. We stopped at individual towns, the local towns, and part of my work that time was with some members of the uh, Teatro Campesino, we would go ahead and make sure that all the local arrangements were being made. And uh, in my memory, I remember coming into Parlier, in the Peregrinación. And when we were going through La Colonia, there were a lot of young kids in the sides, in the sidewalks. And the Peregrinación was going through the town. And I remember listening to what the kids were saying. And they were rewriting the music of Janos, Nonos Moviran. They were saying, we are blocking traffic. Nonos Moviran. And in the face of it, you would say, what does that have to do with anything? It's youth. But it's not youth. Is that each one, each one person, each one generation has to redefine what are the issues that are most dear to them. And to the kids in Parlier on that year, the police was an issue. They were not yet working in the fields, so for them the union was not life. Even though they all said, Viva la huelga, viva la raza, viva la Virgen de Guadalupe. But those kids were saying that they felt that the police in Parlier de Serife, uh, in the county, was actually prejudicial to them. They felt it personally that it was prejudicial to them. And that concept was influential to me when I went to Los Angeles to work in La Raza newspaper. Because it said to me that what we have to do if we're trying to do what we call organizing, and I'm not sure I know what that means, but we have to go and ask the people, or not just ask them, but observe the people as they interact among themselves. What is it that they talk about? What is it that they feel? What is in their gut? Not what the politicians say are the issues, but what do the people say are the issues and how to get involved with those issues for helping the people accomplish their goals. Years later, we found out that there was a Brazilian educator that had defined what that was, and he called it conscientización. And since then, everybody talks but it was being at that level and asking people, what is it that you want to see in the newspaper? Not what the editor said, not what the advertisers might want to say, not what the agency heads might want to say.
but what do the people want to be said? And that's what was our effort. Now, while I was working there, I received a phone call to come one day to be as a consultant to help a committee at Fresno State talk about how to develop a program on La Raza studies. And I guess the reason for being invited was that I was the editor of La Raza newspaper at the time. And I remember being part of that invitation came from Via. Part of it was Raul Piquet, uh, Steve Santos, Guillermo Martinez, DC, uh, and other people. Well, those are the ones that I remember the most. So thank you for giving me a job. <laughs> Even though I wasn't looking for a job. Uh, and I didn't know what La Casa Studies was. Because there was no books as to what La Casa Studies was. So that the first semester I was here, I have was teaching three classes. And the three classes were basically to try to find out in the social area, in the philosophy area, and in the practical area, what is it that the students themselves thought was important. What the students themselves thought it was important. And out of that, develop the framework of what La Raza studies should be teaching people what they wanted to learn. What's the point about teaching people what they don't want to learn? And that's why the dropout rate in the high schools is so high. Because they don't ask the students what they want to learn. They tell the students what they have to learn. But it's good for them. And some place along the line they say, Charlie, <laughs> So uh, the idea of asking people how they think, or how they see themselves participating in the life of the community is the key to what the movement became. The movement became a way of giving people a voice collectively, not individually. The individuals that had the opportunity were able to do it, have their voices heard. Most of the time those voices were not really pertinent to what the community wanted. But they were leaders. They were attorneys. Attorneys. <laughs> But they didn't ask the community what it is that you want to do. What is it that you want to see developing? And that's what I think the movement did. Student movement, women's movement, um, correctional officers movement, one of the toughest toughest places to organize for an officer in a prison to see that the majority of the prisoners who are Spanish speaking are treated culturally and humanly and humanly uh, I met some of them, and that is a tough place to be and a tough place to actually try to define what you, how do you participate in the process. But in every area, medical students, we have now hundreds, thousands 
or chicken or not. You couldn't find them in the own book <laughs> at that time. Uh, teachers, there are many teachers, the students from Fresno State, La Raza Studies. One student that is here present, Teresita, and he said, this year I retired. I said, impossible. <laughs> you can't be old enough to retire. You were a student. Well, she is. She has been a, a teacher for how many years, Teresita? 30. <laughs> And in every area, we can see that the movement of that time has created a whole layer of people who are still Chicano. They think of themselves as Chicano. They are proud of being Chicano and still are in positions where they can, in fact, influence how the society functions. Not enough. Not enough. Population in California is, of Chicanos, is equal to the Anglo-Saxon population. But the Influence and the power is nowhere near being 50%. So we have a lot of job to do. And it's not history of the past, but it's the history that we have to make. History that our grandchildren will study in school.